I'm Mark Callian, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. The Hydros Launch is an all-in-one aquarium controller and monitor that's a great way to get started inside the Hydros ecosystem. Or if you've already got some Hydros modules and you want to expand things, it's a great way to complement your existing Hydro system. Now on the last show, I went through the launch, I showed you the basics of it, I got it on my Wi-Fi and I got it into my collective. So if you missed that show, the link is in the description. Make sure you go back and watch it so that you're up to speed. In the last episode, I said I was going to configure the launch like I'm putting it on my 1,000 gallon reef. But plans change and I'm not going to do that. I'm going to configure the launch like I was putting it on a more typical saltwater aquarium because most people don't have a tank that's 1,000 gallons, even though they wish they did. And most systems aren't this complex. So I'm going to configure the launch as if I was putting on a much simpler, much more straightforward saltwater tank. Most saltwater tanks have a return pump, a heater, a protein skimmer, and a light. These are the pieces of equipment that are the bare minimum that need to be controlled by the launch. Luckily, the launch has four 110 volt outlets, so we don't need to add to the launch to control these pieces of gear. The launch comes with a pH probe and a temperature probe. Now, pH is important to understand, and as you progress in your saltwater tank career, you're gonna understand more of its relations to how your tank is doing and other tank parameters. But I'm most concerned about temperature at the beginning of your saltwater tank career, and a lot of times I'm most concerned about temperature throughout my tank's career. Why? Because most saltwater tanks require a heater, and some saltwater tanks even require a chiller to cool things down. These pieces of equipment are the number one failure point for saltwater aquariums, so if I can monitor the temperature and control it through the launch or some kind of aquarium controller, then I want to do that. This is non-negotiable for me. If you have a heater or a chiller on your tank, you have to have that heater or chiller controlled by some kind of aquarium controller. Sure, they're simple standalone type controllers, but I've got the launch, can easily monitor temperature, send me alerts if something goes wrong, and then make decisions for me without inputs from me to shut off that heater or chiller to prevent a tank meltdown or tank freeze. If you have a heater, you have a chiller, you have to control the thing, and I've got the launch, it's just gonna make this whole thing really easy. All right, all this talk about temperature control. The launch comes with a temperature probe, but we have to tell it that it has one and where we're gonna put it. So I'm gonna go to inputs, plus button, temperature, create, and then what type is it? It's a sense port. Where is it plugged in? Sense port one. What is it? It's a temperature probe. Then we have a wizard for safe ranges and if we want to create a graph and look at it. So safe range 77, this needs to come back a little bit. You can press the up down buttons or press on the value, the number to get a keyboard. We're going to uh, 82.5 is a little high. Let's go down to 81.5. Done here. Graph limits. Don't worry about this yet. Notification level. This is going to be red because if something is off with the temperature, that's a big deal. I want to know about it. And at this point, we've set up the temperature probe. Upload changes is going to write it to the cloud. It's going to write it to your system. And then we can go back here and see the temperature. Now that that's set up, we can go back and can program the rest of the hydros. Programming the launch is super easy. First thing I'm gonna do is program all these 110 volt outputs. I'm gonna go in here to my status. There's gonna see some stuff here. Don't worry about this. What I want you to go is to the hamburger up here in the upper left, three horizontal lines. Go to outputs. Now what I want you to notice is the button in the lower right, the plus button. Press that, we're gonna name it. So the return pump is the first thing that's plugged into our hydros, so we're gonna call it return. Create, and then there's wizards built into this thing, so it's super simple, no coding needed. Go down here to return pump, click on that, boom, it pulls up everything that's gonna be needed. It's related to your return pump. Leak inputs, this is if we had a leak detector, you don't have to worry about that. What you do need to worry about at this point is, where is the return pump plugged into? It's plugged into the launch on outlet number one. Active in modes for basic setup. We don't have to worry about this. Depends on, we don't have to worry about this yet. I'm just giving you a basic setup to get you going straight out of the box. 
upload, the whole thing's gonna write to your system, done, that's it. That was the return pump, let's keep going. Back up to the hamburger, three horizontal lines in the upper left. Outputs, next thing is gonna be our skimmer, because that's plugged into outlet number two. Create, what is it? Oh, it's a protein skimmer, boom, protein skimmer wizard comes up. There's some things in here that you don't have to worry about yet. Output device, where is this thing plugged in? It's plugged into the launch outlet number two. Active in modes, you can worry about that at a future time. Don't have to worry about it now, but we do want to worry about what's it depend on? In other words, if something happens on another outlet, is that going to affect the protein skimmer outlet? Yes, we want it dependent on the return pump because if the return pump turns off, then we want to turn off the protein skimmer because the water level in your sump is going to rise. And if you leave your protein skimmer on, it's going to overflow. So the return pump is off, then the protein skimmer outlet is off. Done, upload changes, give it just a second, and we've programmed our protein skimmer. Don't stop now, we're on a roll. Add another one, this is gonna be our heater. This gets me every time, you have to go to temperature control because kaboom, there's a chiller wizard and then there's a heater wizard. No matter what kind of heating or chilling device you have, it's got a wizard built in. Turn on at, this is the temperature you want it to turn on, turn off at, I like to give it a one degree spread. So we can type it in directly. You can hit the plus minus arrows, whatever way you want to do it. Now this is important. Where is it pulling the temperature reading from? Well, we plugged in our temperature probe, which we called temperature. That's where it's going to get the temperature reading. What's the output device? Where is this heater plugged into? Launch outlet three. At this point, that's all we need for a basic heater configuration. Yes, you can expand on that if you want, but I don't want you to get bogged down in the details. Our heater is now configured. And then let's go over to our light. A lot of lights these days are smart. You can set up their own schedule inside the light, but we're gonna say we're using an old school T5 or simple on and off light. Go down to the simple lights wizard type. Okay, why not? It's a fluorescent light for you T5 people out there. Everyone needs their love. When do you want it to start? Okay, let's start it at eight in the morning because that's when we're at work or getting going. We want to see things and then it's going to turn off at, okay, six o'clock at night because these lights aren't dimmable. We don't want to blast a tank with too much light. Where is the light plugged in? I just launched outlet four. Active in modes, the rest of this doesn't matter for what we're doing, just hit upload. Once it writes to everything, we are off to the races. We have now programmed our launch. We can go down here and see all of our tiles that we created. Return pump, light, heater, skimmer. These other ones, the CO2, calcium reactor, don't worry about those, that's something else on my system. But you can see we have these tiles that we just programmed. They're up and running. If we want to turn something on, click on the tile you want to turn on. You can turn it off, you can turn it on, or you want to go back and configure it. You can go back in here and let us go back into the configuration. In this case, we want this thing to be auto. We don't want to leave the lights on forever. And that's it. I have now programmed the Hydros launch that's going to cover 90% of the saltwater tanks out there. Easy peasy, done. So the launch has drive ports and sense ports built in. Drive ports with the sense ports are an easy way to add an auto top off system to your tank. And even if I'm not using an auto top off system, definitely use the sense ports to add a water on floor sensor, also known as a marriage saver. Some reason water spills out of your saltwater tank, your skimmer overflows, water hits the floor, you can set up the launch with the water on floor sensor to detect that, shut things down, and send you an alert. That way you get to find out first as opposed to your partner or your spouse coming in and going, oh, there's water on the floor, this is not good. So, the launch has the capabilities to control our 110 volt outlets, drive our ATO pumps, other low voltage type of pumps, and sense things going on in our tank, whether it be temperature, high or low water volumes, if you wanna do an auto top off system, or water on floor. So we've got lots of capabilities here. Now I know some of you advanced reefers are wondering about that little thing right there, the salinity probe. I'm gonna cover that. It takes a little bit to get set up and get broken in according to Hydro, so I'm gonna set this thing up. I will cover that with you in a future video. For now, I'm Mark Cowling, Mr. Saltwater Tank. 
Coming to you on behalf of saltwaterquarium.com, take a look at the Hydros. It's time to get this thing mounted, installed, so I can start using it on my system. Here's a great way to get into the CoralView Hydros ecosystem or expand onto your existing Hydros ecosystem. Another item, home office is not getting back. Mm -hmm.